skill to compete for fabulous prizes. Join me, Pat Sajak, for Wheel of Fortune, and you'll be a winner, too. Be the first to guess the four ninety nine. dollars Now at Walker's, sheets and mattress pads are half price. See the rest and shop the best. Quality waterbeds at money-saving prices. Walker's Waterbeds, Johnson Street, Lafayette, and Torito Village, New Iberia. Walker's Waterbeds. We'll remember FDR 40 years after his death with ABC's Robert Trump, the man who introduced FDR's famous fireside chats. Tomorrow, watch ABC's World News Tonight. One physician recently put it this way, never have so many known so much about a pill but been unable to put risk and safety in perspective. The pill she was talking about was the birth control pill. The message? That a good deal of what we, the public, think we know about contraception is quite likely to be inaccurate or simply wrong. Here now is ABC News medical editor, Dr. Timothy Johnson. As both a physician and a medical journalist, I'm impressed with all the new changing information about contraception, much of which uh, the public is not aware of. One piece of information that is startling, I think, for most people is that sterilization, if you combine both men and women, is the most common form of contraception today. That is, tubal ligations and vasectomies. Now, that's interesting because a lot of people have the idea that contraception in that form is easily reversible, and it really isn't, even though with microsurgical techniques today, uh, vasectomies and tubal ligations can often be reversed. It should be regarded as an irreversible kind of contraception. The pill has obviously fallen into disrepute in recent years. The number of women using the pill has dropped off rather dramatically during the 70s. But that reputation is probably not well deserved. And indeed, recent information would suggest that the pill in its modern form is not only very effective, but also really quite safe. Indeed, some studies suggest that the pill may actually protect against certain cancers like ovarian and endometrial cancer. It may well reduce, probably does reduce, the risk of infection in the female reproductive tract, so-called pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID. Beyond that, I think we should recognize that the pill is indeed very, very effective and even safer than getting pregnant. For example, the statistics show that about 10 out of every 100,000 births will re result in the death of the woman, whereas only about 5 out of every 100,000 pill users will die from the use of the pill. And if the pill use were restricted to women under age 35 and non-smoking women, that risk would drop even more dramatically to less than one death out of 100,000 pill users. So the pill, which is effective in preventing pregnancy, is even safer than becoming pregnant. Having said all of that, obviously there are still some women who should not use the pill, primarily older women or women who smoke or women who have other certain medical problems. But by and large, the pill has an undeserved reputation as being dangerous today's modern version of the pill is really not that dangerous and is very effective. The news being reported about IUDs in today's New England Journal of Medicine I think may be somewhat misinterpreted in the press as being all bad. In truth, it's kind of mixed. Uh, we have long known that the IUD may increase the risk for infection in the female reproductive tract, pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID, and studies have shown that now for years. However, we have not had until today direct studies showing a direct link between IUD use and actual infertility, which is often a consequence of pelvic inflammatory disease. The studies today show that the IUD overall increases the risk of infertility about twofold. That's the bad news. The good news is that if you break down those risks into the types of IUDs used, it shows that the kind of IUD being used most commonly today has a very low risk of both infection and infertility. Indeed, one of the studies didn't show a statistically significant increased risk for infertility. The kinds of IUDs that clearly do increase risk for infection and infertility are the old-style plastic ones, particularly the Dalcon Shield, which of course is no longer on the market, uh, and uh, the recommendation clearly is for those women who still have it in place to have it removed. But the modern form, the copper IUDs, have very little additional risk, and there are a lot of advantages to the IUD in terms of ease of use once it's inserted uh, it is in place it doesn't involve any continuing effort on the part of the woman now again there are certain women who should not use an IUD particularly women who have never been pregnant or women who have multiple sexual partners in such women women who have not been pregnant or who have multiple sexual partners the increased risk for infection and presumably for consequent infertility is considerably higher 
The barrier methods of contraception, the condom, the diaphragm, etc., can be really quite effective if they are used very carefully and faithfully and according to direction. The problem is that they're often not used that way, and so their failure is often a matter of human error rather than the technique itself. But they certainly overall do not compare in effectiveness to the sterilization or the pill or the IUD. Surveys indicate that about 55% of pregnancies today are, quote, unintended. That means that we still obviously need good information about contraception to try to reduce that figure. And I think it's very important that people have modern, up-to-day information so they can make a rational, reasonable choice as to what's best for them. Dr. Timothy Johnson, when we come back, we'll be joined by a leading medical expert on birth control, Dr. Elizabeth Connell, professor of gynecology and obstetrics at Emory University in Atlanta. 11.6 million men and women have chosen sterilization as their form of birth control. 10 million women use the pill. 4.5 million couples rely on condoms, with intrauterine devices next on the list, used by 2.5 million women.